Welcome everyone to the second video we're talking about the equations of state of real gases. Here we're going to talk about van der Waals gases. Okay, so the van der Waals equation of state, one you might have seen before, is given by this equation here. Now, <clears throat> two different forms here, one with the number of moles explicitly written, others with the number of moles moved in with the volume to get the molar volume, right? But this van der Waals equation of state kind of two terms here, okay, right? There's this, this first term, right? This V minus NB, right? If we recall our regular equation of state for an ideal gas is NRT divided by V. So here's this extra term minus NB, okay? That minus NB is related with the effective volume of the gas, right? The fact that a gas molecule, right, while small, does take up some amount of volume, right? And enough gas molecules will take up enough volume that it matters at high pressures or low volumes, okay? And so, so these Van der Waals equation of state here has this, this effective volume term that's thrown in, okay? And then this extra term here, A times N over the volume squared, right? This thing is subtracted from the pressure, right? You have this NRT, over V term in the ideal gas, and you're subtracting off some extra term, okay? That subtracted off extra term is reducing the overall effective pressure, okay? And that is related with collisions of the molecules and mainly f related with intermolecular interactions and favorable attractions between the molecules, right? So the Van der Waals equation of state is more empirically driven, more driven based off the physical interpretations of how an ideal gas deviates from a real gas in which there's this effective volume in these intermolecular forces that exist between the gases, okay? And so this isn't really derived necessarily in any sort of fundamental way, but more was kind of picked and determined this functional form, okay? Based off of, again, these two um, deviations from ideal gases. Okay, some of these, these coefficients here, right, for A and B, Again, A is the effective volume, right? So you see for larger molecules like xenon here, right? A is much larger than the smaller molecules like helium, okay? And then B has to do with the, the um, intermolecular forces and the strength of those forces, right? And so again, all of these molecules and uh, atoms have dispersion forces. And so xenon has the largest dispersion forces. And so it has the largest value of B as well, while helium, right, has the smallest dispersion interactions um, between other helium particles and so it has the smallest value of B. Okay. And again, all these values of A and B are determined through experiments to determine what they are. Okay. But we'll note here again that a Van der Waals equation of state does work to better describe a gas than an ideal gas equation of state, but it doesn't work everywhere. Okay. Specifically, there are what are called these Van der Waals loops where the actual, right, as you um, reduce the volume, you have a case where the pressure decreases as well, right? Which makes no physical sense, right? Would never happen where when you decrease the volume of a gas, it decreases the pressure as well. That never happens, okay? And so that's an unphysical effect, right? And so the Van der Waals equation state does not hold under all pressure and volume ratios, okay? And will break down at certain regions, right? And really those regions have to do with where in a real gas you'd have a phase change, right? So we talked about in a previous lecture video how on the right here, the, these um, states, these lines describe the states of a gas, right? You have this C, D, and E, right? And these are corresponding to a phase change between a gas and a liquid, right? Where you condense your gas when you go from C to E, right? And so during that region where you have a phase change from gas going to liquid, right, the Van der Waals equation of state breaks down. That's because, right, the Van der Waals equation of state cannot describe a phase change, right? So it kind of makes sense that that's where it breaks down. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in these plots, we can talk about the critical temperature, right? And the critical temperature, right, which you talk about in phase diagrams, you, right, you plot out your phase diagram, right, that critical temperature right, is that temperature where the boundary between liquids and gases kind of disappears, right? 
you have kind of this now equilibrium between gases and liquid phase that um, coexists, right? You know, supercritical gas or supercritical liquid or things of that nature, right? Um, <clears throat> and that, say, in this plot here is given by this star, right? This region right here, right, is your critical temperature, okay? And so the temperature in which your uh, gas reaches that point where both the gas and the liquid are in equilibrium is a critical temperature. And you can solve for that critical temperature based off of this, where the critical temperature should be when the slope of this pressure versus volume curve is equal to zero and the curvature is equal to zero, right? So you notice at that highlighted point, right? You have zero slope and you're now changing your curvature, right? From having a downward curvature to having an upward curvature for your equation of state, okay? And so solving this set of equations for the equation of state of the gas gives you the critical temperature of gas. Now, obviously an ideal gas will have no critical temperature, so we'll never have anything like this, okay? But we can solve this for a van der Waals gas. So if you plug in the equation of state of a van der Waals gas, right, into these two equations, and then solve for your critical temperature, you can then solve for your critical volume and your critical pressure. Okay, so the critical volume and critical pressure, what is the volume and pressure at that critical temperature of your gas? Okay, and that is given by these values here specifically for a van der Waals gas, right? Okay. <clears throat> and finally, if you want, one can write these. Um, equations of states in what are called reduced variables, where we take the temperature and divide it by the critical temperature, the molar volume divided by the critical molar volume, and the pressure divided by the critical pressure. Okay, when you do that, you get say for the Van der Waals equation of state. So this is the equation of the reduced Van der Waals equation of state. Okay, this is the reduced Van der Waals equation of state. And you notice that this thing technically does not depend on any of these constants, A or B, right? It just depends on the reduced temperature, reduced volume, right? And reduced pressure, okay? So that's why these are called like reduced equations of state, right? This equation of state holds for every type of gas, okay? Um, <clears throat> right, but again, it, 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 there's a little sort of um, caveat here, right? Where you're having to divide each one of these pressure temperatures and volumes by the critical values, right? Which then depend on the constants A and B and so on, right? But, but yeah, you do have this, this, this reduced equation of state, if you will, right? That then is the same for any gas, okay? So that does it for discussions of the different types of equations of states for gas, where we've talked about both virial gases and Van der Waals gases.